Hey guys, thanks so much for tuning in to the David Pietala podcast where I interview incredible guests to bring you avenues of income and success in music. Today, my guest is Justin from Unbroken. He does uh, a lot of the songwriting in the band. He plays guitar and he sings as well. And earlier this year, they had an EP release. Now, obviously, there weren't too many shows happening, so they had to get a little crafty with the release. Uh, They ended up doing this really professional-looking presentation uh, live stream, and I wanted to pick Justin's brain about how he made all of that work. The second half of the episode, we talk about a really cool festival that Justin is helping to put on, and I get all the details for you to go check out. Thanks again for tuning in. Now take a listen to my conversation with Justin from Unbroken. So Justin, talk to me. You guys released an EP in January. Yep. Uh, So tell me about that EP. Tell me about... uh, the process of recording it, and then what the songs are kind of like. Okay. And I'll, I'll play some of it before this so people can hear it, too. Oh, hey, sweet. Um, the EP we released on January 15th, uh, it was an EP called Black Lines. Um, basically, it consisted of like more of our like classic rock like sounding songs, if that makes sense. Yeah, yeah. Um, we were, are in the process of recording an album called Rise, and before the COVID hit all these songs were actually supposed to be on the album, like the album we're working oh, on right now. Okay. So all these songs we've had, you know, I think we, what did we record those a year and a half, two years ago at this point? I think a year and a half ago. It's so that we've been holding on to them for a long time because yeah. we wanted to record the rest of the album, but we just, with COVID, we haven't been able to do that until recently. So as a band, we decided let's take these five songs. Well, we came back and we recorded that acoustic right version of take me which is a song that's going to be on the album but we came back and we recorded that and we decided to release these songs that we've been holding on to as an ep so that's why we decided to release the black lines ep is kind of just get more music out because it was a while since we've got music out and yeah you got to stay relevant absolutely absolutely with covid we you know we had music already recorded so we were just kind of like hey it's Let's send this out here and see what happens. So you guys did more than just send it out there. You guys put on a cool live stream. Um, I thought it looked and sounded really good. Um, Can you talk us through how you kind of set that up? So I used a software called OBS. Um, It's a really nice like live streaming service. That's free, isn't it? Yeah, it is. Okay, solid. And um, there's a guy that does our artwork and stuff. His name is Jason John and he did some like live action shots for like our logo and oh, name from the, of the music album. played right yeah okay so like we asked him like hey since you do this can you uh take these and just kind of like make banners and stuff for us so we have mm-hmm. like a live action like smoke and you know some it was like i don't i'm trying to think of the i don't either i don't remember what the effects he used but basically he made this live action like wallpaper so what I did is I incorporated all of the artwork that he gave us, the mm-hmm. live action artwork and whatever and not. And on OBS, you can set up multiple different scenes. Mm-hmm. So certain scenes, I would have it where I would we had these stream videos that we have. We took them and we put them in there and we just kind of used it. Like we couldn't have a live show as like an EP release. So we, right. we yeah. improvised and like we were able to make everything looked super good i had a 4k webcam i went and bought um all the audio was ran through my Focusrite scarlet um so the mic quality was really good yeah it was uh you and van kind of talking through the songs right oh yeah 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 and then we just kind of like listen i because you have the option in obs that if you want your mic on for certain things Mm -hmm. so like when we were playing the songs we tend we didn't have them on because we just kind of wanted to listen right? because we didn't want to say a bunch of gibberish over the top of (laughs) it because I was still kind of just learning like the levels and everything. So I didn't want like our voices to be like three times louder than the That was one thing I was really impressed with. I was, uh, when you told me you were doing a live stream, I was curious at how that would go because that's something that a lot of people mess up. Mm -hmm. So in OBS, did you just have like faders for your live mic versus the music? Yeah. So there was faders and like, there was like actually gain. So I could actually adjust the gain a little bit. Okay. And so kind of like I run, run sound quite a bit. So I pay attention to stuff like that. Okay. 
So when I did that, I tried to make everything about the same so I could see what decibels my music was peaking at. So I made sure that my vo vocal mics were, you know, a little, just slight bit louder than what the music was. Okay. But I didn't want it to like be too much louder. I think it was like two or three decibels louder. So basically when the music was done, we started talking. We didn't want our voices quieter than the song. We wanted our voices to be louder than the song when we started right. talking when they were done. Right. One thing I was really impressed with was the transitions between you guys talking and then going into the music. How did you get that screen from um, from you guys talking? Was it like a screen share thing where you just did the screen share and then played the video? So with OBS, you can set up these scenes. Okay. And I set up scenes where we had the videos playing because you can like, you. it gives you a bunch of options in OBS. Like I could go online right now on obs and i could go through like a youtube link or something mm -hmm. and i can copy and paste that in the obs and that will have that video in that screen so basically okay. it kind of goes like that there's a screen share option so like i can literally just have my computer right in front of me mm -hmm. and share share my whole window so you can see everything i see but the way i set it up in the OBS is I had all of these songs had these stream videos. Mm -hmm. So each scene had these stream videos. And then I, what I did is I just overlaid the webcam on there. So basically all I had to do is when we were in the live stream, we could take it and I could click on one of these other scenes and it would transition oh. into these other scenes without me having to do anything besides clicking. Okay. And then did it autoplay after you transitioned? Oh, yeah. yeah. Wow. Dude, that's, that's slick. I was, oh, yeah. I was really impressed when I saw that. Um, so I didn't see the whole thing. I was driving, so I obviously shouldn't drive and watch that. <laughs> um, did you guys try to sell merch while you were on there? Or I don't think so. I okay. actually, I don't remember okay. if we did or not. Do you I, guys have a website? No, we do not. That's something we want to work on, though. Okay, that'll be this year. I'm going to have, um, hopefully, a, a screen capture video that I'm probably going to use OBS for and just show bands how to make an easy and good website using Wix. So mm -hmm. hopefully that can come in handy. Yeah, because we eventually want to get to the point where we have a website with our merch on it. Yeah. And then people can just buy our merch online and go from there. Yes. Yeah, so let's talk about merch for a second. If you sell merch at shows, obviously you can only sell them at shows. And if you sell merch on somebody else's platform, they have control over all the rules. Mm -hmm. If you make your own website and... You sell the merch on your website. You make all the rules for your website and for your merch, and you make all the money. So I, I cannot recommend enough to anybody listening, make a website, put your own merch on there, because that's how you make a living in music. If you're a band, merch is the way of life. <laughs> oh, yeah. There, there's been multiple times where we've definitely sold way more for merch than we have made for the show. Absolutely. <laughs> it's, yeah. it's just, oh, come and play this show for 75 bucks. Okay. And then make $200 in merch sales. It, just, it makes it all worth it. Yeah. And you guys have cool merch too. Yeah. So that, that kind of plays a part in it. Oh, yeah. We yeah. have what Travis likes to call our Regrets Remembered shirt, which is the one with the black uh, and the skull and the mirror. Is that the one you gave me? Yeah, that's the one you I have. I love this shirt. I wear that shirt all the time. And we have a all white version of that with it's, it's actually white with black. Okay. And we actually made that ex exclusive show oh, merch. Oh, okay. Because we've had a lot of people that were like, oh, we want these shirts and we want to buy them. And we're like, okay, we well, can buy them. And we did that for a long time. But yeah. now we kind of want to be like, hey, you want the shirt? Come to the show and then you can get the shirt. That's a great idea. <laughs> because you can't get the shirt from us if you don't come to the show. That's a great idea. Having exclusives. That's, oh, yeah. Uh, that's awesome. Yeah. I mean, our last show, because it was our first show back from the whole COVID thing, mm -hmm. um, people were buy, you know, slowly buying shirts at, during the whole before we played. Yeah. And then when we got on stage and we said, oh, yeah, we got an exclusive shirt. You can only get it at shows. We probably sold 7 to 15 shirts after the show of those uh, ones the, oh yeah of the white ones people okay. like people were like oh that's exclusive shirt show merch they bought them <laughs> that's awesome people listening rewind like 30 seconds and listen to that again because that is gold right there that's awesome so speaking of shows um you got wow that sounded very wisconsin of me speaking of shows there hey <laughs> grab a cheese curtain come sit down <laughs> um <laughs> So speaking of shows, you guys have, uh, is it a festival or some kind of really big show coming up so that you're planning? We have a festival that I am working with the owner of Cora Lanes. Okay. Him and I have kind of been collaborating and trying to think of something to do. Okay. Um, recently in Wassa and, you know, other areas kind of around Wassa, um, we had something called the 400 Block Party, which mm -hmm. was basically a rock-dominated show every year on the 400 Block. 
um they don't do that anymore so me and the owner of coral lanes were kind of like hey there's no like wasa festivals in the area anymore and we should do something so him and i came up with coral fest which coral fest um this year it's rock dominated but because a lot of the bands that i reached out to didn't know if they were going to be playing at the time they okay. didn't know if they were going to you know be available because i started reaching out to bands back in february march okay. just because you know it's something a little bit bigger and uh i want to do something there where we have like rock metal um, honestly to the point where i'm like i want hip-hop there i want a little bit of like you know a little bit blue, of everything huh? yeah like i want it okay. to be like i don't want it to be just a rock festival i want it to be like an everything like wasa local oh that'd be cool you know, yeah bands. this year we got a lot of like people coming from other places which i'm 100 percent okay with mm-hmm. but ideally in the future we want to try to have like m- our main headliners be wasa locals okay um does this, wasa have a lot of bands oh yeah it's they, we have a decent amount of bands okay and it's i'm trying to think there's probably 10 to 20 bands that i can think of off the top of my head right now i had no idea there were not that many people in wasa yeah <laughs> um like this year we have a band called zip nuts and i love those guys um, we're having them open the show. They're from Wassa. Okay. And the um, reason why I'm having them open the show is because they're very communicable when they're on the, oh, on, okay. the, on the stage. Okay. Um, their music is just, you know, it's like, the, it's a comedy act while playing. And it's, it's That's just... That's a good way to start. And they they try to do all these, like, dance moves and stuff in their songs that they add. And I it's just funny because, like, I feel like it's a good attention grabber to start mm. the show. And you know, with them being in Wausau, I, w- I kind of wanted to put them up a little higher on the list, but I'm like, I'm like, no, if we're gonna grab people's attention. We got to put Zip Nuts up first. <laughs> yeah. And, and if, they're we, li- if they're listening, that's a huge compliment. To oh them. yeah, and um, those guys, we've played plenty of shows with them, and they just get funnier every time I see them because <laughs> it seems like every song has something different every time I see them. Okay, that's cool. Um, one of my favorite moves they do, obviously the guys, people listening can't see this, is they <laughs> they kind of do like the YMCA thing, but they stay with the Y. Okay. So they put their arms up and yeah. then they take their hands and like they move it towards their face, like alternating. So okay. the other hand goes up, the other one goes down and they go like this. Okay. So it's like kind of like a, it's a weird motion. <laughs> obviously people listening can't see it, but it's pretty funny because they do it in beat and they like, it's just, it's, it's pretty funny. <laughs> And then we have, uh, I'm trying to think, for Wasa we have a band called X on Dead, which are kind of like a pirate themed metal <laughs> blues band. You have my attention. <laughs> and um, they're called X on Dead, and I I was listening to them the other day because um, I would have been listening to them way earlier if I would have known this, but their album name is called Surrender the Booty. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, smack the booty <laughs> and, and, and it just everything is like really bouncy like you know like pirate feeling songs yeah. and it's, it's they're, they're really good at what they do they're all sea shanties <laughs> yeah <laughs> so their bassist believe it or not yeah. doesn't play a traditional bass for like you know rock bands is it like a uh, stand-up he, bass? He, yeah he plays an upright wow it's an, it's an electric upright and it's like it's not like what you would think like yeah. you know the like the normal looking uprights it's just mm-hmm. basically it's an upright and it's the frame it's like some like frame and then he's got pickups on it and everything and it's it oh. actually it's really cool because you know just that's pretty the sweet. genre of the music that they play it just it's oh, perfect yeah. it fits in with the oh, metal yeah. sea shanties <laughs> and then we have another wasa band um they're called Catastrophic Heroes. There was a guy named Caleb Schilling that played with us for a while. He actually started the band. Okay. So he was in the band with those guys. I don't know. I can't think of everyone's name off the top of the head. But Caleb decided that he wanted to move on and do other things with his life. So mm-hmm. he kind of left the band and all those guys took over. And I actually don't even know what he's doing, but he's doing something now and these guys <laughs> are doing it. And... um they they're like i'm trying to think i don't i'd almost compare them to like and maybe an early falling in reverse oh that's awesome like like they're they've got the heavy and the lead singer he does like this marilyn manson like look feel to him so like he has a, he's got really good screams okay like okay. he has got really good screams and stuff and like i figured they, they those guys would be a good band to have on here because everyone likes metal and wasa like wasa is <laughs> a really big metal place so i, I i'm like we got to have those guys 
And then uh, the last Wasa band is us. Okay. And of course, we we got to play. And, yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, so, but other than that, we got like bands from Madison. We've got some bands from Eau Claire. We have a band from uh, Rockford, Illinois that's coming up. Nice. So we got a l- It's a little bit of everything. <laughs> Dude, I when you said Wasa is a big metal loving town or city. I, what really? <laughs> yeah, actually, believe it or not, there's more metal bands in Wassa than there is anything else. That's crazy. Like, we're talking like pretty heavy metal. Like, we're ta- I would never have guessed that, but that's awesome. Like, uh, just to name a few, there's uh, All Out Mutiny, Drenched in Fear. Um, I mean, this is Stevens Point, but basically, Stevens Point's kind of Wassa when you think it in the okay. long run. Okay. Uh, Second Archer, there's a band called that. Mm-hmm. Those um, guys are getting pretty big. Oh, yeah. Um, Constance. Okay, those are some big names like, and, in in the scene here. Yeah. And then, um, oh, man, I'm blanking now. Put me on the spot. I'm trying to think of names. I mean, I would consider, you know, Catastrophic Heroes is definitely on the heavier side of a lot of the bands that are there. There's a band called Purging Paradise from Wassa. Um, oh, I can't, I can't name any other ones off the top of my head, but that's just a few Then those are all like heavier metal bands. Yeah. And those are well-known ones too. Yeah. I had no idea all those guys were from Wausau oh, yeah. or Stevens Point area. Yeah. That's crazy. Well, okay. Every, well, every one of them except for second and archers Wausau. Okay. So Constance and all them are from Wausau. That's awesome. And, um, we're getting heavier, which is yeah, a, is yeah. A, I've noticed with this new stuff. It ha- it's not intentional, but it's just happening. It's not a bad thing at all. No, I'm I'm really excited for this new album. Yeah, I, when we did the blue line or blue lines, wow, the black lines. When we did the black lines EP, um, I thought the songs were just really solid, and you guys were really coming together. And now, um, if anyone doesn't know, I'm, I'm the producer of Unbroken's latest records. Yeah. So, um. When you guys came in with the the newer tracks, I was like, "All right, I'm getting some cojones on these now." Yeah, <laughs> all right. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it's I'm, cool. I'm really excited. I've been working on because we've been working on this album for the last year and a half, two years. Um, we wanted to record last May, mm-hmm. but that was like COVID hit, and yeah, we were weren't able to get together and practice and get everyone caught up to speed and. Um, we weren't able to even record, so we just kind of like took a break. So like the whole band just took a break for a while. Yeah. Um, I want to say August, September is when we were kind of like, okay, um, are you guys okay with practicing with each other? Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, we're okay with practicing each other. So we start working on the album then. We would have been done with this album, I want to say, well before where we are right now. Yeah. But we threw a new member into the band. Oh yes. So we added a completely new complexity to this album that we didn't realize was going to be there. And it's much better with it. Yes. And with the third guitar and having him come up and learning everything, Mm -hmm. these songs have a lot more depth to them. Um, There's a few songs that I all three of us are playing nothing similar to each other at all. And I love it. Yeah. It's just a fun feeling to it. But with that being said, that's why we're now we're here <laughs> yeah. april is when we started doing drums i think was so. it april that that does sound right it was maybe end of april april i was just finishing like up that. the courtesy of tim stuff and i wanted to wait till after i was done mixing that record because oh that mm-hmm. and the force field ones because those mm-hmm. were like pretty pretty intense um i, want, I, I think, think it was about uh, that. late april maybe and then maybe we did mid-April. guitars right away yeah and then we have bass coming up, and then vocals, which vocals are going to take forever. Yeah, a lot of layers and harmonies. Yeah, and, yeah. that's yeah. going to be fun, though. But I think David's even more excited for what's after the album. What's after the album? All, you remember all the stuff I sent you? Oh, yeah, you guys have tons of new music. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah, I, I'm kind of sad that that stuff's not going to be on this album, but at the same time, it's also just a new evolution of mm-hmm. Unbroken. So, mm-hmm. Yeah, I... I got bored of well i hate to say this but i got bored of playing the new album because we've been playing it so much as a group and not playing it out i just you know i wanted new music to work on i just wanted to prep us so when as soon as we got done with this album released it and i'm super excited for the release i'm super excited to play as a five piece hearing what everything sounds like as a five piece yeah um you know, I say I'm bored of it now, but I'm only bored of it because we're sitting in the same spot. Yeah, you can't like yeah. perform it yet. Well, you can, but I mean, yeah, yeah, you're going we, to. By the way, when is the show? 
Um, oh, the this Coral festival. Fest is August 21st. It's called Coral Fest, August yes. 21st. Uh, is it a one-day event? Yes, there's eight bands. It starts at 2 o'clock, and we got to be done by about 10.30. Okay, that's badass. And there's a $10 cover, though. It's worth it. And all the money's going towards bands, which also, that's another thing I should mention. Um, with the Coral Fest thing, me and the owner of Coral Lanes decided that 50% of the pro- money that is the door fee is going towards the band, and 50% of the door fee is me and him are putting it off to the side. Okay. There is potential talk that in the next few years here, depending on how much money we build up, mm-hmm. we're going to tr- try pulling national headliner That would be bad in for Coral Fest, hopefully by the fourth or fifth year, maybe even earlier. If you guys don't have Lamb of God by next year, I'm not coming. <laughs> <laughs> okay, well, let's wrap this up here. So you guys ran a very successful uh, live stream, looked very professional. You guys looked like you were on a label and you, were, you just did it yourself. So you yep. a free program. Well, thank you. That was badass. Um, the new music, um, Black Lines EP. Check it out on Spotify. Where else can they find it? Uh, Apple Music, Amazon, uh, YouTube. We have all the stream videos on YouTube, all the stream videos on Facebook. Um, basically, any streaming service because we, we use CD Baby to s- distribute. So it, they distribute it basically anywhere they can get it. Okay, solid. Uh, where can people find more from Unbroken? Um, our main source of anything Unbroken is definitely Facebook, which is just um, Unbroken, which is U N dash broken. <laughs> Don't forget the hyphen, or otherwise you probably won't find us. Yep. <laughs> but, uh, we post all the updates and all of our shows on there and uh, definitely keep an eye on it because within the next few weeks here, we're going to be having new stuff coming in. We have the Black Lines physical e- CDs coming in next week. Good. So that, we're going to yeah. have physical copies, which we finally decided to print those because we finally started playing shows again. Mm-hmm. And we just we had other things we wanted to spend money on as a band, and we didn't think it was necessary to drop it. Back on then, yeah. January 15th and then all have all these physical CDs that we want to be able to sell until the summer anyways. Yeah. And then we have a new shirt that should be coming out before the end of the summer. Nice. It's going to be a black line shirt. I'm really pumped for that one because nice. it looks super cool. Um, and new music. Um, we're going to have... Yeah, it's coming out later this year, hopefully. Should I, be done by this year. Yeah, I'd say yeah. N- no, October, November, December. Somewhere in there we'll probably release the album. Yeah, we're almost done tracking, so... Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, but, uh, sweet. So then where can people find out about this Coral Fest? Coral Fest, um, go on Facebook. Um, you can probably search Coral Fest 2021, and you should be able to find it. Solid. Yeah. And all it right. has all the details, all of the bands, times, and everything you need to know about Coral Fest is right then and there. Perfect. All right, well, thanks for coming on today. Yeah, thanks for having me. Yeah, let's get out of here. All right, sounds good. If you guys are looking for a recording engineer or a producer for your band, feel free to check out sourcetrackstudio.com. I'll have the link in the show notes below. Listen to my work, and if you like what you hear, send me a message, and hopefully we can work together.
Chains around my wrists And shadows around my feet 